I'm just ripping this straight from the headlines, guys, from the news uh, blog. Acclaimed NFT artist people, our friend. I would say that you're trying to sell people a load of bullshit and you're just trying to take their money and make a quick buck off of young, uh, young designers who don't know any better. Sells his blockchain backed digital art auction and raises over three and a half million dollars in a weekend. Nifty Gateway. I don't even know who Nifty Gateway or if that's a platform or a person. It's a, and that's all she wrote. The auction ends on a ridiculous last second bid of $777,777, which brings the total primary market sales for people's collection to over $3.5 million. Nuts. And if you're reading this, and I think you'd have to be living under a rock for some time to not hear about NFTs and art and what it's doing for the art world. You're probably sitting there thinking to yourself, what is this and how do I get in on this? And is this all hype? We're going to answer that in this episode. Christie's set to become the first major auction house to sell a purely digital artwork known as an NFT. Now, the work is a montage by the artist Mike Winkleman, known as Beeple. I want to tell you a couple of things I know about Beeple right off the front here. He's from Wisconsin, but now he's currently resides in Charleston, South Carolina. He produces VJ clips for concerts, and I want to talk to him about that. I also found out he's a family man. He's got two kids and he's been doing every days, every day for 10 years. Some of you guys know him as people, but we now know him as Mike Winkleman and he's going to be on the show doing the math before 10 years, an image a day, 365 days a year. That equates to more than 3,650 images. It's so big. I can't even contain it in one slide. I think who people is, is pretty consistent. Let's just get straight into it. We're just going to go balls deep on it right out of the gate. Despite his recent success making millions of dollars selling his artwork. But there's also many times where I'll put in a ton of work and I'm like, this blows. Like that was a god waste of time. He's a Midwesterner. He's kind of a bit of an art geek. Or there's times where I'll do something super quick and it'll just like, I'll get lucky and I'll be like, oh, f it's done. And he's a little crass and we jokingly refer to him as like the art world's Bill Gates. Uh, Pedro is saying Beeple is the Bill Gates of every days. <laughs> and he does look a little like Bill Gates right now, doesn't he? <laughs> people who said I look like Bill Gates. There was a picture <laughs> that uh, Zed posted with me next to Zed and he's got, you know, millions of followers on Instagram or whatever. And all the comments, Bill Gates, Bill Gates, Bill Gates, Bill Gates. Bill Gates. <laughs> And he has that kind of vibe about him. Very plain spoken, plain dress, you know, just shaggy, you know, his whole hair and he's, he's just kind of disheveled. He is who he presents himself to be and he's not changed one bit. He's a fantastic artist in terms of like the way he's able to create these digital paintings, a hybrid between CG 3D rendering and Photoshop. And he does this at such a prolific pace. He does one every single day that it's incredible that he has pieces that are very consistent and they're, they're, they're good. Not all of them are winners, of course, but for the volume in which he's doing, it's incredible. So there's the artist's side. And then there's this kind of self-deprecating like, yeah, I don't know what it is, whatever. I'm just doing this thing, man. I'm just having a good time. I don't really like trying to like sell stuff. Uh, I don't really like, I already kind of feel like I'm spamming people with just the like work that I'm putting out. Uh, just the like every days. I learned about his every days before I met him in real life or even before us doing our Zooms. I, I was just sitting there looking at this guy's artwork and you can just keep scrolling. It just doesn't end. So at some point I'm like, I give up. There's just too many pieces of art here. And it's just like every single day there's a new piece that comes up. If you think about it, if someone's going to cash in on NFTs, I can't think of anyone more deserving than people. The guy is doing something because he loves it. And he couldn't have imagined like over 10 years ago that one day he's going to sell a digital copy of his artwork for millions of dollars and people are going to love him for it. No way. So I like it. Like when somebody is that committed to a vision and a purpose and giving up his nights and weekends working on this. And I know what it's like to create 45 days worth of content. So forget about 10 years of doing it for 365 days a year. It's just even like what have you done in your life that you were that consistent besides breathing it's this tough sort of mix between like taking uh, the entire thing like super serious that you're going to commit to putting in like hours a day, but not taking each sort of day so serious that it paralyzes you from like putting out work. Non-fungible token, NFT. Well, what is that? 
I'd love to tell you I know and I don't and I've watched enough videos, but I know when I'm out of my league. And so let's kick this over to Mark Contreras, who's our local resident crypto expert. Mark, what do you have to say? All right, what is an NFT? Well, let's keep it simple. Let's look at collectibles in the physical world. You can buy, sell, or trade items like limited artwork, trading cards, or you might even stand in line for the latest Nike shoe drop. People want to own a piece of something unique and special. Now, often these collectibles have limited supply and can be validated by some type of certificate of authenticity. Now that's where NFTs come in. Think of it as a contract that verifies an owner and a transaction for digital or even physical items. Here's where some of the technical stuff comes in. NFTs are validated and they live on a shared database that cannot be tampered with, known as the blockchain. You could buy, sell, and trade NFTs on a variety of platforms using digital currency known as cryptocurrency. So what does NFT stand for? It stands for non-fungible token. The word fungible means interchangeable. It refers to the unique properties and value of these items which are tied to this digital contract. So what are some other examples of these digital collectible NFTs? Back in the days, you might have heard of things like CryptoPunks and CryptoKitties, which are simply just images that you could buy, sell, or trade on these platforms. Fast forward to today, you have artists like Beeple selling his work for $6.6 .6 million, or NBA Top Shot, where you could buy a digital basketball card of someone like LeBron James, and you'll see a video of a special moment in his career. Those go for about $200,000. In the music world, you have artists like Steve Aoki and Grimes selling music and art together, or Jack Dorsey trying to sell his first tweet. Sounds crazy, huh? But the thing is, we already buy digital things like, say, gaming upgrades or even stocks. So what do I think of NFTs? I'm really excited to see where this technology is going to go. You could even use NFTs for something like a VIP ticket for an event or an experience. I would just be very careful of where you're putting your money. So I hope this clears it up for you. How do you make this understandable to the layperson? So I think there's a couple different ways and analogies that I like to use. Um, I, like one of them is the Mona Lisa. Anybody can sort of take a picture of the Mona Lisa, but that doesn't mean you own the Mona Lisa. So when we're talking about, say, a painting like the Mona Lisa or one of Van Gogh's paintings, we're seeing a translation of something that's pigment on canvas translated into things that are recorded with light and then reproduced on a screen that's emitting light to your eyes. You know that that's not real. You know there's a difference there and that's why museums exist. Museums wouldn't exist if the facsimile of it was as powerful as the thing itself. And so there's some things to take into consideration. I, I believe the frame, and I don't mean literally just the frame around the painting, but the frame, the wall that it's on, the hall that it's in, the venue that it resides in contributes to the entire experience. And that's why gallery um, designers and people who do exhibition design put a lot of thought into like how you see these pieces of art in a sequential manner, where it sits, the amount of light that it gets. And so I, I was at the Louvre and trying to visit the, uh, the Mona Lisa. It's behind, what, eight inches of glass and there's a, a line separating you from from the piece of artwork that's like maybe 10 feet away and then there's a sea of people in front of it so it's like that's not art either it's like i don't even know what's behind all that right but at some point if you're if you're in close proximity to a mark rothko or um, an andy warhol painting and you can see the undulations the unevenness in the painting the canvas and the discoloration that's the real version that's why I went to museum because I wanted to see it with my own eyes and to experience it. And I don't know if there's something with the, the shared energy between myself and the wall and the painting versus a facsimile of it, a digital approximation. When you talk about NFTs, the facsimile is the thing. Non fungible. Token. Wait, Savannah has a very important question. <laughs> no, that, yes. I have a, my question is, huh? No. no, but really, what do you do with it? Like, if you have a digital file that you paid two point five million dollars of, yeah, but then what? It, you can't hang yours. it up. Yeah, I know. Well, I guess you could say it's kind of like. And then art. you show In it to your cases, friend. You know, it's you're like, your here it is. I have it right here, and they're like, yeah, me too. <laughs> and it looks the exact but, same. But I paid yeah. for it. I paid two and a half million for it. Yeah. Oh, well, you're an idiot. Uh, I was talking to Matthew about this. If I buy a Picasso, it's first of all because I love Picasso. Two, Picasso's dead, so they can't make any more. So we know that the, there's finite supply of art. But I look at it and I, I, I love it. The colors, the form, 
the size, the scale, the materials and how he handles it, the, the artist's hand in the work. I see that and I can appreciate that. If the painting sells for $60 million, that's just value add. But every day that I get to see this thing in my house or in my office, it makes me smile. And I, I would love to share that feeling with the world. That's why I think people loan the art to museums uh, for, for their display because they want other people to enjoy it. When you talk about a digital piece of art, like what are we enjoying? What are we seeing? Because these images are available online. So there's zero difference between that image and what I can search on my phone and just display. It's literally the same image, except for one has a unique blockchain or code attached to it, an NFT token assigned to it saying of, the, of this piece of art, this one person owns this impression of an image. Do I display it on my wall? Like, is it more impressive because it's on my phone or on the wall? I don't think so. So I think people are just buying into the idea of something that's rare. And maybe people are really bored right now and they like this idea. And so we're seeing people go into it and, and buying art this way. My concern, I could be totally wrong on this, is it's like a Ponzi scheme. The last person to buy that piece of art ultimately might be the sucker. As long as there's someone else to buy that piece of art from you and an NFT piece of art, then you're fine. So if I sell it for a thousand dollars, whoever paid a thousand dollars for it is a sucker. But they sell it for four thousand dollars. Well, the next person is a sucker, and they keep going, and everyone gets value. And ultimately, the last person is, is the one who picks up the the tab, if you will, for everyone else before them. That's where it gets kind of interesting. I see, I've seen this phenomenon happen before in the comics world in the '90s when they were printing millions of copies which makes it like not rare at all and then assigning every kind of gimmick alternate cover a foil cover a, a, a black and white cover just to try and drive demand and a lot of speculators came into the market people who had no interest in comic books but because they were going to buy the comic and then resell it and make money it was a cash grab and eventually some people got caught at the end and lost a lot of money and it almost ruined the entire comic industry you're up one million dollars. Yes! Mm. And now you've lost all but six hundred dollars. You got greedy, Martin. So I don't really know what's going to happen with this, but hey, if you're an artist and you're making art and this is good for you, more power to you. A lot of people who are in for a quick buck are going to run into this and buy some project because somebody told them it's going to go up. And when I say, hey, 97% of NFT projects, not the NFT space, mm -hmm. are very vulnerable to not being successful investments, I believe that to be true out of history, out of knowing human psychology. Artists should totally care about NFTs. It's all the buzz uh, on the channels. People are talking about on YouTube and Clubhouse. And I think it's important because if you're the creator of the NFT, you're first in, you're, you're creating it and somebody's gonna buy it and you're gonna receive value from it. I just worry about the investors who get in and hype up prices and then somebody's gonna get caught with this. And at that end, you're not responsible for that obviously, but it's good to get in. Strike while the iron's hot. living room and we're watching the closing of the auction which closes in an hour and 18 minutes it's already at like a absolutely ridiculous amount that I made is very much influenced by the tools and influenced by the work of a bunch of people in the crypto community as well. Hey Mike, this is Jason. I just want to say congratulations. You're at 25 million, 250,000. Crazy man. Jesus Christ, what the hell? Oh, oh my God! God. Wow. 50 million! What? Oh my God! Wow. Six wow. million. $69 million. I think it probably means digital art is here to stay. I'm going to Disney World! People, call me. We used to know each other when we were both broke, so give me a call.